Hi gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll go through the details tool in Luminar AI. It's got a handful of controls for really crafting fine level detail in your photos. Uh, you, know, you get more control over it than just structure AI. Structure AI is great. You can get your, your basics done, but if you have something that needs fine tuning, details tool is where it's at. Really quick, if you're interested in adding Luminar to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that'll save you money. And if you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. So let's have a look at the details tool. I have this photo of a metal roof and there are lots of opportunities to bring out some fine detail. These types of photos are very good for the details tool to get those fine details showing up. Let me open up the details tool and I will add a gradient mask. And the reason for this, let's bring this over here, is I want to put it right through the center of this rivet so that we can really see the before and after effect of detail. So let's just tighten that up really, really tight. Like right there. Let's position it there. Okay, great. Put our masking tool away. And rule number one working with the details tool is zoom in. You need to zoom in at least 100% to see what's going on. Otherwise, you won't have the best view of how much detail am I adding? Am I making things too crispy or you know, am I not adding enough detail? So we'll zoom in at 100% and I'll reposition here. So this is our, you know, kind of a rivet of choice and so things to the right will be affected because of our mask and things to the left will not. So the very first thing, let's prove that. Let's just make sure we're looking at the right spot in the photo. Okay, we've added a whole ton of detail on the right hand side. You can see this is over the top, but we know where we're looking, so let's get into it here. We have controls for small details, medium details, large details. We'll come back to sharpen in a minute. But let's start with large details. So this is kind of the larger entities or objects. As I push this farther, you know, I'm starting to see, sure, the edge of this rivet here, kind of these darker patches are getting more defined, but small details in, say, the brighter parts, like this greenish white part of the roof, those aren't being shown. Small details would be the opposite. As I push that forward, look at all that micro texture that's showing up. All of these little tiny bits here, we're getting lots and lots and lots of that. And medium is, well, somewhere in the middle, right? We have some amount of detail being added. A good starting point I like to work with is kind of like, you know, four or five, maybe 10 to 15, and 10 to 15 or so on the detail, and then go from there. You know, in this case, because it's such a grungy looking thing, I might push these sliders up a little bit more. But a starting point, a little bit small and like a moderate amount on medium and large, will give you a pretty good amount of detail. I mean, we can really see that. Even doing a before and after is almost, almost pointless. We had the before and after right next to each other. But you can see how much this coaxes out. Now I'm going to skip over Sharpen for a minute and open up Details Masking. Now what details masking is trying to do is prevent areas from becoming overly detailed. If they get like hyper crispy, that's too much. And there's a, there's a default amount of this masking slider. We have two sliders. We have protection, so protect areas from details. And I'll push this all the way. You can see things get softened. This is almost like, um, you know, dial down the volume for me on my, my details. And then masking does roughly the same thing. If I have no masking, I've had basically no protection at all. Full masking is kind of nonsensical because we want to add some amount of detail. Values in the range of like, you know, the 30-ish to 70-ish makes sense. In practice, I tend not to open this panel up. And if I find things are too detailed, I'll back it off with the small, medium, and large sliders. That's just my workflow. But if you're having struggle like, oh, you know, wow, between 17 and 18, it's just it's just a world of difference. I need I need a little bit more, but a little bit less. That's where your protection sliders come in. So that's really, really fine tuning things. But uh, a key thing really is understand the small, medium and large sliders. So you're affecting different sized objects and different sized edges in your scene. Now, let's go back to sharpen. So let me reset all of these sliders. Okay. 
And I didn't want to reset the tool because that would remove my mask. <laughs> now let's add sharpen. Let's push sharpen all the way over. What happens? Oh, we get much sharper on the, on the right side where we have our mask. Not a surprise, but notice it's a different style of detail, right? Compare that to pushing the smalls really far. This is kind of very crispy, a little bit artificial. Sharpen is a more natural looking sharpening. So a touch of sharpening can be quite helpful in conjunction with the details. We'll do a final uh, combination of everything here. The last piece I want to show you is the sharpening masking. We have two controls here. Once again, these are kind of fine tuning how much sharpening. Radius is like how far away from an edge of contrast will I sharpen? If I want more sharpened past the edges of contrast or do I want less? And you can see that effect there. You know, look around like the contrast edges in here and right around this area there. Let's push the radius farther. We see more of those details showing up. We have less. You know, the default is usually pretty good, maybe a touch more. The upper and lower ends of this slider, territory I usually don't enter into. That's, you know, at that point, you know, go back to your main slider. Same thing with masking. Uh, th this is almost like a, a range, you know, do I want to have more things affected by detail? So I'll reduce the amount of masking or do I want to have less things? I'll increase the masking. Now, once again, the default is pretty good. Occasionally, I'll increase this up, but more often than not, I'm working with just the sharpen slider itself. So let's reset all those things. We'll combine the adjustments of small, medium, large, and then add in a bit of sharpening to just kind of really, the, the sharpening almost helps to, um, it's ironic, I'm going to say smooth things out, but um, let's say even out the amounts of detail that we get added in here. And so there we go. And then let's do a before and after. Before and after. And that's a really nice touch. So at this stage, let me get rid of my mask. Let's clear the mask. Fill it in, actually. Sorry, fill. There we go. So now I've got my detail across my entire photo before and after. Now, one other thing about the details tool is you can take the detail slider, small, medium, large, in the negative direction and remove detail, so soften things. And that can be a nice look depending on the type of photo you're working with. Uh, also, using details with your masking tools, either to accentuate a subject where you add detail with painting it in, or in that case of, I want to soften certain things, maybe I want to soften a background, you can throw a gradient on a background, dial back on the uh, details just a little bit. All depends on what you need to do with the photo. But you can go negative with details. You can't go negative with sharpening, though. And that's it. I hope you found the video useful. You got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.